Give a Wesu Garani or the Anjanine or the Anine and Kepri Taka some mother dent. Near an open anime boy in our water. Can you wear up for the young way you push me like in the other key where men are better? Tapan, can you never be good? Can you not swear, Bianni Rogi? Give a make up Yafra where Guzzo seek. Can you wear any better man's in your house or to turn us up on a jammer? Sit a lady in Marone, be said. He said, He said, Mamma de Regicineke. Mama de Regi Chineke. Mama de Regi Chineke. That is the language of heaven that I have prayed in and we shall continue. Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remember us. Today, once again, we have gathered to talk about the situation of the contraption called Nigeria. A lot is really going on. But for those of us who are Biafrans, don't forget the instruction that our school leader, Amazin Nadekano, has given us on prayers. We, are, Hannah, we have to go to continue to pray with our school leader, Amazin Nadekano. We've got to continue to pray with him. Today is the 79th day of the prayer. If you have not joined, it is not yet late. Miracles are happening. A lot is happening. And this prayer is the key. You have to continue to pray. When you pray with along with Asun Lamazin Nandikani, you can hear from him. Each time you pray along with him, you can hear from him directly. For those of us who are still having confusion and doubt on so many places, pray more with Asun Lamazin Nandikani. Do those things he told you to do. You will hear directly from him and know the instruction that is coming from him. As you all know, Bia France will forever remain united. We cannot go away from the struggle. The main purpose of our struggle is for us to have freedom. Every indigenous tribe in that country from called Nigeria must be free. That is the mission of Asun Damazin Nandikana. And we all have bought that mission. And we are working towards that mission to achieve our freedom. Nothing else. For those who are still doubting, who are still having confusion, do not have any confusion and do not doubt. The IPOB and the DOS... They are doing what they are supposed to do. They are working for the freedom of you, for the freedom of Asul Amazin and Nandikano, and the freedom of all Biafrans. Also for the freedom of every indigenous tribe in that country called Nigeria. Do not talk down on IPUB. Do not talk down on the DOS. The DOS are doing what they are supposed to do. It is not easy to lead. If you are in their own position, you will see that you may be failing on so many issues. When there are some loopholes somewhere, it must be managed and be looked towards and things we have to move forward we have to move forward there is no need to sit back and continue to complain continue to complain who said this and who said that who is doing this and who is this. this is the time for us to be stronger our enemies are watching us to see when we are going to relent in our effort our enemies are watching us to see when we are going to have confusion among us we don't have to allow that it doesn't matter what you think personally keep your own opinion to yourself Think about whatever you think. Pray for Asun Lamazin Nandekano and walk according to the instruction he has given us. Remember, while our Asun Lamazin Nandekano was with us, he told us, he gave us a platform that we must listen to and he told us some people we must obey. We have to keep those commands until our Asun Lamazin Nandekano joins us. If you are having a doubt, all you have to do is to go into prayers as he had directed us. Pray along with Asun Lamazin Nandekano as he is praying directing messages to us through his prayers go and pray join the prayers you will hear directly and know what is to do and what to follow at the right time but as it stands the dos remains the supreme authority in the battle of freedom of biafrance dos remains those who are going to obey and respect we will continue to respect them because our supreme amazing nadikano have given them to us if you respect our supreme amazing nadikano of course you have to respect dos Nobody is above mistake. Mistake can happen from time to time. But what you have to do is to pray and not to complain. Not to look down on them. Not to talk down on them. This is not time to allow division. And this is not time to allow trouble. This is not time to play the card of the enemy. This is the time for us to show that we are truly united. This is the time to show that we truly love as well as the can. Every Biafran have actually showed that love. I am really happy with what I'm seeing. If not for the love we have with Mazen Nandekano, so many arguments will not be there. But because of the love we have with Asun Lamazin Nandekano, 
That is why there are a lot of argument, there are a lot of wars from all angles. But it is okay. It is okay. There is nothing that is abnormal that is happening among the beer France now. There is nothing that is abnormal that is happening in the IPOB. There is nothing that abnormal that is happening in the life of those who are supporting Biafra. We are all doing what we are supposed to do. There is nobody who his father, his friend, or somebody he loves will be in captivity and who will be happy. We are always suspicious. It is right to be suspicious, but while we are being suspicious, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. Do not look down on the authority that Mazin Dandekano cannot have established. He wouldn't be happy with that. He wouldn't be happy with that. And he has given us some platform we should listen to. Please try to visit the platform and hear what they are saying. Remember, he prescribed. He, he mentioned. Uh, he, he prescribed the, the the platform of our brother Simon Epper. Go and listen to the platform of Simon Epper. You will hear a lot. He also told us to continue to listen to Radio Biafra. That is number one place we must have to be getting our information. Radio Biafra. Don't forget to listen to Radio Biafra at all times. Listen to Rubia Biafra. That is where you get first-hand information of what is happening. Listen to Simon Epa. That is our brother, whom our Mazin and the Kano has directed us to listen to. Listen to Mayego General. This is another platform he has mentioned to us that we continue to listen to. Go to this platform and hear their own opinion, what they are saying. There is nothing wrong yet. The battle for freedom is not a small one. It's not an easy one. There will be a lot of hindrances here and there. And the enemies will continue to try to infiltrate us and be able to put in some confusion among us. But we wouldn't allow that. Do not allow any confusion to come between the Biafrans, between the members of IPUB. Do not look down on the DOS. Marcin Nandekano established the DOS. They gave instruction. We have to follow. We have been following the instruction and we have to continue to follow the instruction until our soon the Marcin Nandekano comes out. He's going to come out. But the most important thing you're going to be doing is to Put the DOS in prayer. Pray for them, for God to give them that knowledge. Give them that wisdom that he has given to us, William Martin and the Kano, to be able to sense danger when it is coming. Pray for us, William Martin and the Kano, that God will give him revelations, even while he is away from us. He is a very prayerful leader. He hears from Chukwu Kabiyama. And if we pray along with him, a lot of revelation will come to us, William Martin and the Kano. You'll be surprised the others that will be coming. Do not just sit down and complain. Pray and walk towards the assignment that Asun Lamazin Nandekano has given us, preaching the gospel of peace and unity in the southern part of Nigeria. The southern part of Nigeria has to be united. Fight in one front. It is no longer time to be divided. We have to fight, bring this victory back home. Then everybody can now control their resources and control their area. You can answer whatever name you choose to answer. You can have whatever nation you want to have. But for now, the unity is very important. That was the message of Asun Lamazin Nandekano before he left us. We have to stand on that ground. Continue to preach for unity among all the Southerners. It doesn't matter your tribe. It doesn't matter your religion. We are concentrating on the victory, having our freedom, because danger is coming. Just as Asun Lamazin have been announcing, telling us about the danger, the danger is here already. The only way we can be able to save ourselves from this danger is by following the full step of Asun Lamazin Nandekano. If you continue to follow his footstep and listen to him, you will be safe. That is the only way we can be safe. A lot is going on and a lot is happening as I'm speaking to you now. You can see what is going on around the world. It is not a joke. You see what is going on in Afghanistan. This is exactly what is coming to Nigeria. I was willing to have cried. He has talked a lot. And for those of them who are still thinking of one Nigeria, sorry for you. If you still think that there will be a remedy to this so-called one Nigeria, sorry for you. Nigeria is gone. Nigeria is dead and buried. Begin to think of your new nation. That's what you have to do. And for those who are planning for election, you are planning for your own burial and your own death. Starting from Anambra State election, there will be no election in Anambra State. There will be no election. It is not a question of boycott. There will be no election in Anambra State. If you love your life, if you love your freedom, if you love our Sunday Mazinda and the Kano, and you love Biafra, there will be no election in Anambra State. It doesn't matter who is involved. If your brother is involved in the election, tell him to pull away and withdraw before it is too late. If your uncle is in the election, tell him to step aside before it is too late. Whoever that is connected to you that want to officiate in the election that is happening, is going to happen in Anambra State, warn them in time to come because we will always warn you. But at the end of the day, you wouldn't listen. And when you die, they will blame IPOB. IPOB will not be found. Your blood will not be 
will not be called upon in the hand of the members of IPOB. Your blood will not be found in the hands of the Biafrans. But when you try to kill yourself by participating in the election in Anambra State, your blood will be on your, on, your, on your own head. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how you secure you feel you are. It doesn't matter the kind of security they give you. It doesn't matter whom you are, including those who want to participate as governors, governorship as far as parents. If you love yourself and you love your life, step away from that and begin to retrace your step. This is no longer time for joke. The time has gone already. We do not have time anymore. There is no time to talk anymore. This is time for action. You can see Afghanistan. That is exactly what is about to play in your so-called Nigeria. And it has ended. The southeastern part of Nigeria, the old southeastern region, starting from Anambra State, we never have any election anymore. And we are going home. If you like, listen. If you don't like, listen. Nigeria does not exist. There is nothing called Nigeria. It is a shame for somebody to still be addressing him or herself as a Nigerian. It is a shameful thing for somebody, to, a living human being, somebody who is living Britain, somebody who calls himself Say, still be calling him or herself a Nigerian. What a shame. Don't worry. Continue to sit back until when you find yourself in the grave. By then, you'll be hearing the national anthem of Biafra in your grave and the national anthem of Odudua in your grave. There is no more time. There is no more time. If you think it is, continue to listen to the message of Asun Namaz and the Khan. It's a reminder. That is why I will play the message of Asun Namaz and the Khan to remind you, those of you who call yourself one Nigerian, that you are living, you are a living dead. Those who refer themselves as one Nigerian preparing for election, this message is for you. My son Nandikano left the message for you. I will play the video for you to watch from beginning to the end. That Nigeria doesn't exist, has never existed. We have been silent for too long. This is the time to take our fate into our own hand. Let us listen to the message of Asunila, Mazen Nandikano. Once again, His Excellency Mazen Nandikano speaks. Now listen to this. <clears throat> what is the Latin word for black? And now I want Nigerians. This we have now come to the main point this evening. I want Nigerians to be looking at their green, white, green flag. Wherever you are, if you're in Abuja, if you're in Lagos, if you're in Kaduna, bring your green, white, green flag closer. We are about to do a very simple experiment, please. What is the Latin word for black? I want you to Google. As I'm Googling, please try and do the same thing. What is the Latin word for black you simply go to google and google it please and we are doing good it's interactive now we want to do everything together like one happy family so i am writing what is the latin meaning of the word uh, we're live of the word black i'm sorry you cannot see it i'm not that tech savvy what's latin meaning of the word black <laughs> What's the Latin meaning of the word black? Black. What is it? Go to your Google and you put it in. We are live and interactive. We have come to the stage whereby if Facebook doesn't shut me down now, they don't shut it down again. If right now, go and Google the meaning of the word black. The Latin meaning of the word black. And bring your Nigerian flag closer. Green, white, green. Bring it close. To tell you where your stupidity started from. What is black? In Latin. It means. Nigger. Negros. Negros. <laughs> or the adjective is nigger. What is that nigger? What I want to tell you what God did, Elohim. I want to tell you why you are black in Africa, all of us. And I want to prove to you that the name Nigeria is cursed. And then after tonight's program, you will see need and reason why Nigeria should not exist. I'm not going to add anything to this. We well, want to do something. I want to read comments. Somebody should tell me I'm reading. If I move to the to the left, it means I'm checking Radio Biafra. If I'm here, direct it is my page on Facebook Live. I want somebody to tell me 
the Latin, Google it, the Latin meaning of the word black. This is your G. Do you know what it means? It means Negro. Number one. The adjective is nigger or Niger. If you, look, you, you think it's Niger State, N I G E R. Niger. Nigeria. Latin meaning of the word black. Then we proceed. What does it mean? Those who brought the word black, this Negro and Niger, Nigeria, what did they have in mind? Who are they trying to describe? That's the meaning of the of adjective, isn't it? To qualify, to describe something. What is it? Hey, now you're in for the shock. The name Nigeria. <laughs> it means black, black, we know. It means something that is dark, we know. It means something that is ill omen, bad luck. Ill omen. So Nigeria is bad luck. Not me, oh. Go to Google. Oh. Then I've got Google self. Who are these people self? Nah, nah, I got Google. Who are these people? I have not seen anything here. Oh. I have not seen anything here. Somebody is saying I shouldn't talk about Democrats in America. You see how foolish people are. That election is pregnant. Black people always are afraid to speak the truth. Joe Biden is a racist. We have it on record. Forget all the nonsense in South Africa. I was saying about apartheid. He is a conquest. I have it here. I will find it this time and play it. Go, go, to, go to Google now. Go to Google and find the meaning of the word black. Then nobody here says, Are they uh, listening to me or not? Huh? Uh -huh. It means Negro. It means Niger. <laughs> Niger State. <laughs> Capital Mina. N Niger Republic in French. <laughs> Nigeria, area of black, useless people. And what does it mean? It means ill omened. It means Nigeria means pitch black. Nigeria means unlucky. The people that coined the word black and called you nigger, Nigeria. So a name that is banned in America, Negro, is what you're answering in Nigeria. Do you see your life? This is, I'm an intellectual. I'm a professor. Those IPOB, they are, are mysteries. I have four degrees oh, from Princeton, from Harvard. Do you know the meaning of your name is ill omen? Omen. Ill omen. Do you know that your name is unlucky? Do you know that? That you are a nigger. You are a negro. Nigger, nigger. And I am proud to be a Nigerian. That is why, if you call me a Nigerian, God, Satan will punish you upon the punishment you have. Thunder will fire you. All of you refer to me as a Nigerian, and God in heaven will punish you and punish your family. Ill omen, unlucky, nigger, negro. That's your name. A name a white man gave to you. A name you're fighting very hard to maintain. Do you see how foolish you are? As a Nigerian, <laughs> do you see how foolish you are? Your name means it's here now. Unlucky. It means black, gloomy, gloomy. It means dismal, dismal. Something that is dismal. Hey, she make me obscure. You cannot see it. There is no light. It's obscure. That's the meaning of the word Nigeria. I'm giving it to you now, live and direct. Something you will not hear anywhere else in the world. Here you will hear it. <laughs> hey! Now, nigger area. Who named you Nigeria? A racist. <laughs> what is Niger State? It means unlucky, ill-omened, gloomy, dismal, obscure. I'm from Niger State. We Niger State indigenous. <laughs> Do you see why blacks are useless? In this, we are we are useless. God knows we are useless. Blacks are useless. Useless to the core. Nigeria. Look at Niger. The name you Niger Republic for French. Nigeria for English. And I ask you, 
You that is saying you're from South South or Niger Delta. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> uh, dear me. <laughs> I want to ask those of you from Obomosho in Yoruba land or from Ijebuode. That is uh, Niger Republic, which means Niger, up near Sudan. You, you are Nigerian from Obomosho. Are you related uh, by blood? Uh, how how come? Are you witnessing your stupidity live and direct? Do you see how foolish you are when you call yourself a Nigerian? Do you see how daft you are? You are you are you are unlucky. You are ill omened. You are dismal. You are gloomy. That is your name, and you expect never to give you light. When your name is darkness, you want never to give you light. Hey, Chine Keme, unbelievable. What is the origin of the word black? Who originated it? <laughs> it's from Europe now. It's from Europe. And then let us look at what white means. <laughs> uh, dear me, it means purity, clean, pure, radiant. <laughs> And then what does the uh, everything is there? You can see it. <laughs> uh, what in the Bible that we have in the Bat Bible that uh, 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 what's their name? Adaboy uh, is stealing, bleeding you dry from. <laughs> Facebook has come. I told you, <laughs> from twenty five thousand, we have now gone to they've taken away nine hundred uh, people, which means nine thousand people. I told you, there is no way I can, we cannot remain like this. I feel it is impossible. They can't allow it. But we continue to preach. We continue to preach. <laughs> hey, dear me. What does it mean in Christianity? <laughs> uh, black is the color of mourning. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> it means mourning. Black. Somebody should type it in Google, please, and publish it for the world to see. What is the meaning of, listen, Google meaning of the color black in the Bible. In the Bible, what is the meaning of nigger? This Nigeria you're answering. That's what we're getting at. Because if you agree that black is a Negro nigger, what, is the, what does the Bible tell you about Nigeria? Now you see, we are now going a bit spiritual. What does the Bible tell about Nigeria? I'm about to tell you. The Bible says that Nigeria is a place that lacks brightness, that is no light. It does not reflect any light back. Which means all they do is to take in from people. They don't give a head. The same way we are consuming a toothpick, toothbrush, everything we import is even in the Bible. It's here. Now. I'm reading it now. It's, I googled it and it is here. The meaning of the color black in the Bible. So Nigeria means in the Bible a place that is backward. Backward. No light. They consume everything. Even the cause of the name Nigeria is in the Bible itself. But if you go to church now, they only take you to where you pay your tithe. You sow your seed. You water your plant. But on radio, Biafra will tell you the truth. I told you after today, your life will no longer be the same. From I'm asking you to go and check it out. You, you, you'll be astonished. You'll be astonished. That is, the, that is how the world flows. So you're a Nigerian now? How many of you, after this night, a Nigerian? I said, how many of you are Nigerians? I'm asking you. How many of you are? <laughs> The zoo cannot think critically. They cannot reason. That's why they, they say, I'm, I said, I will be arrogant. I went to school, I'm educated, I'm refined. If I stand you in a debate, I will demolish you within two minutes. Complete deconstruction in two minutes, I will obliterate you with facts and figures. If you're, if you're intelligent, tell, uh, uh, let us go and have a debate. I'm lying to you, I finish you completely. Go, go, go. You didn't go to school and you want to challenge somebody who's educated. How is that possible? 
You went to school and you read with lantern and palaka. You use palaka to read. And they gave you a third rate uh, law degree and you come out and you think you can challenge me. You must be insane. Completely insane. We are live and we are direct and the whole world is listening. We are educating ourselves today. To tell you how bad a black person is evil. Embodiment of evil. A black man is evil. I'm trying to prove it to you. So that uh, if you survive tonight by tomorrow, <laughs> you'll be a changed person. Your life will be way better than it is tonight. That is what we are praying for. And that's exactly what we are going to get. There is, I want somebody to... Um, there's something called the psychology of, uh, of black. <laughs> something called the psychology of black. I want somebody to Google it. The color psychology of black. The color psychology of black. <laughs> hey, zoo. zoo is in trouble. We are dealing with Nigeria. <laughs> the color psychology of black. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> Unbelievable. 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 Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Black is often used as a symbol of menace or evil. Black is for death and mourning. So when Boko Haram are killing you, you're just fulfilling what the whole world, because you are the name that you answer. How many people come out today to answer Jezebel? A simple example. How many people will name their daughter as Jezebel? I'm asking you a simple question. Will you name your daughter Jezebel? No. <laughs> but you call yourselves Nigerians nigger. A condemned word. A name that doesn't resonate. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad. Of course, Facebook, they're doing their job now. I thought they went to sleep before. <laughs> they are now doing their job. <laughs> They are now doing their job because the whole world is listening. The whole world is listening. And because white people radiate light, Ihechi Neke, that is why we answer Ihechi, the light of God. You must, you need light to be able to see. If you're in darkness, pitch black, you cannot see. And that is what is happening in Nigeria. People cannot see. They cannot see. They are blind. And here, we make you try to see the light. Very, very important. One of the greatest rulers in the history of Belgium is King Leopold II. King Leopold. He went to do a lot of job for them in, um, in Congo. And he, to an extent, I think he may have um, succeeded in Congo. Colonized the place. But today... They are pulling his statues down in Antwerp, in Bruges. Everywhere they find his statue, they are taking it down. His family is still ruling. I want to let you understand how white people reason. I said the family of Leopold is still ruling, to, is a royal family that is still ruling Belgium till today. His, his um, should I say, his great, great grandchildren are in charge. No. Not great, great. His grandchildren are in charge of Belgium. King Leopold. Yet, white Belgians went and destroyed his statues. Because they have conscience. Something that blacks don't have. Something the Yoruba race don't have and may never have in their, in their entire existence on this earth. It takes courage and conviction to have the presence of mind to confront evil. Nobody has been able to tell me why a nation of 70 million people, because of eight years of political power, will sit idly by and impunity will be happening on a daily basis. Nobody can tell me why. In Belgium, despite their colorful history, Despite the fact that the grandchildren of this man are sitting on the throne of Belgium, ordinary white people went out 
and destroy the statues of King Leopold. Courage and conviction. And here, that is what we believe in. But not the, Abacha has a stadium. Abacha, Abacha has a stadium. Named after him. Uh, uh, Pa Edwin Clark is, uh, is uh, an influential man in a Joland, but he was a traitor. He sold his own land for money and he was rewarded with the chairman of Pandev. Neamodo, his father was a traitor during the war. He was rewarded with Hanese chairman. Are you surprised? That is why they're killing us. They, they cannot talk. They, they can't speak. Can't you see? And I will analyze his letter later on. Here, you see, I have it here. The letter he wrote to, 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 the, to, to the 30 year old boy. That was why when the British came, they saw the light in Biafra. In Yachineke, they saw it. In Arochu. And they said that you have no history, as I told you before. And. Uh, I want everybody to go to Google again, oh, because we are lecturing today and type in the word Sambation. I want to teach you something this very day that will shock even our enemies. Go to Google and you type in this word, please. S-A-M-B-A-T-Y-O-N. It's called Sambat. Yon is called the Sambatian River. <laughs> I give Elohim praise. Sambatian River. Go and as I'm reading it, I want you to be reading it, please. Sambatian River. So you'll be shocked. I told you everything I tell you is gospel from heaven. I don't add anything of mine. As I'm given the message from heaven, I give it to you. Three people make up the Biafran people. The whole of Biafra. Forget uh, all these other names. The whole of Biafra. The Igbo people. The house of God. And his um, nephews. Ephraim and Manasseh. Are you listening to me? There are the ancient Ndibo, the ancient people who are there. The first wave of migrants came from Egypt. The, the, the second wave came from Samaria. Three people. One came from Egypt, Sudan. Egypt, Sudan, Niger, Yoruba land, into Igbo land. First wave, the house of God. The house of Ephraim and Manasseh came through Egypt, came through Djibouti, went through the upper lands of um, Ethiopia, came into the Afar region of Ethiopia, proceeded through the Central African Republic we know today, into Cameroons, and into Biafra land. The third and the final wave that came. Three people make up the land of Biafra. Three. And when I say that um, Biafrans are Israelites or Hebrew, not all of it. I've told you this before. So there will be no confusion. I want you to go and type in Sambation. Some spell it S-A-M-B-A-T-I-O-N. S for sugar. A for apple. M for mother. B for bravo. A for apple. T for tango. I for India. O for Oscar. And N for November. You can find it at Sambation. I read it. <laughs> Oh dear me. In the earliest literature, where do I begin? What is Sambation? It is the mythical river. It is the mythical river. Oh God in heaven. A river of stone. A river of stone that took Jews to every part of the world. There was a man that wrote Many, many centuries ago, many centuries ago, unbelievable, this is shocking, shocking, I'm telling you, the river Sambation flew, flowed beyond 
the rivers of Abyssinia. Remember when I told you about the Afar region and I told you about Biafra, Biafra, Biafra is and Biafra. This man is saying that the exact place that we located on the map has to have Biafra in it during the migration was where this very river was located. And these are Jewish scholars of note. Josephus, Pilni the Elder. These people we are writing in the ancient days. In ancient days. Even, even uh, an, an, an Arabian writer, but his name is Abraham Abulafia. And this same river was mentioned in Second Kings as well in the Bible. The river that flowed beyond the rivers of Abyssinia. And what is Abyssinia? Is Ethiopia. If you go beyond Ethiopia, it becomes the kingdom of Biafra. It's here. I didn't write it. Everything we tell you is gospel. Everything we tell you is gospel. Absolute gospel. Some people don't understand. They don't reason very well. But here we reason. Go and research it. Sambation is an assignment. Go and read it. Then you will understand the miracle that Elohim is doing in our lives. You must understand it. They say you have no history. I don't know that the, the British discovered something they never wanted anybody to see. They said, uh, your name is now Nigeria. <laughs> it means gloomy. It means dark. It means evil. Oh dear me. They say that the most, credible, the most credible account is that given by a Jewish writer and traveler. He's the most credible. His name is Eldad the Danite. You know the tribe of Dan. In his letter to the Jews in Spain in the year 883 AD, he said, Who are we? And the children of light. The children of light. There's something I want to play for you. There is something that I wish to play for you that the whole world may understand it. To know who we are. To know why we are agitating for Biafra. To tell the so-called misguided foolish elders that cannot see, that are not learned, to let them understand why we do what we do. They know nothing. That is why we are the way we are. They know nothing. I want to show you something. There's a possibility Listen. That the international community can be brought to bear, the UN. Uh, Listen. The of human rights all the way through. This is a very... No. It has gone. It has... Oh, my goodness. It has gone. I will try to play it from here. Try to play it. Mob TV. I Listen. That, uh, we believe that there's a possibility that the international community can be brought to bear, the UN, uh, Listen. the Declaration of Human Rights, all the way through. This is a very, very serious matter. There's something that I a didn't white man. and I hesitate. A white man, a white man. I'm not Nigerian, although I think uh, Dr. Lloyd has bestowed upon me the honorary title of Nigeria man. <laughs> and he was, we had a conversation. It wasn't heated, but he, he acted like he was going to revoke my Nigeria man credentials. Listen. <laughs> causing my 13-year-old son, who was in the car with me, to be very distraught. He said, Dad, you have to stay a Nigeria man. Um, but talking about children, when I was a little boy, mm -hmm. when I was seven years old, growing up in the middle of nowhere, Florida, in a swamp, closest town was 30 miles away. Mm -hmm. The first thing that happened in the world that brought to bear to me that maybe things weren't always right, maybe yes. things weren't always good, was not the Vietnam War. Vietnam War? I was in the South. It was correct and just. And we were the warriors. Mm-hmm. It was the Biafra War. Biafra. Listen. I remember very distinctly thinking, this just isn't right. This isn't right. The British. This is a great hear it now. People. It is a great nation. It's a great nation. Biafra. A country. And then later when I learned something most people don't know, mm -hmm. that there is a plausible argument that democracy began in Igbo land. Igbo land. A white man. Democracy. The world knows today started in Igbo land. The, the whole world over. A white man, an American, 
an American doing his research. I don't know who has this clip, but I want to post it on my page. Democracy started where in Igbo land. Now, do you see the reason why I tell you that we are the most, the oldest people on this earth? And if you don't have the grace of God, you cannot write. You cannot read and write. A white man doing research in America. This is what this is why CNN will not carry our news. If you're wondering why BBC won't carry, this is it. Because the white man understands what Biafra means. Blacks in Africa don't know. They don't know the purpose of God in their lives. They have no idea. You see, the Yoruba see Biafra as um, something there to be fought. Let's fight it. They are fighting Biafra out of ignorance. This man did his research and said what our ancestors were able to do 5,000 years ago, now, today, we cannot do it. The first written constitution in the whole world, Igbo land. The first organized government in the world, Igbo land. The first, the only, there are two people that God controlled from heaven. The Israelites and those that he sent to Biafra land. Only two. The Israelites revolt, revolted and said, give us a king so we can be like other nations. And Chuko Kabyama gave them Saul. Do you know the funniest thing? The Igbo race never asked for a king. Instead, they named their children Chibu Ezra that God is king. That is why if you come out in, in Biafra land in those days, I say Igbo land as an example because they're the ones maintaining it. And you say to somebody, you're a king. They'll tell you to go and be a king to your wife and your children. Now you understand how special we are. Now you understand why I fight for Biafra to be free. And I want my Yoruba brethren to understand, once Biafra is free, you're also very free. You'll be very rich, I assure you. Because it's a blessing from God in heaven, not man. And this is what the British never wanted you to know. They don't want you to know this, never. Because they, they want us to be saying it. And being a black man from Africa, if you're saying it, people won't believe you. The British saw this. That was why they said we must amalgamate them. They found a name, the Aziki, when the Aziki was a willing tool of the devil. And he agreed. Mazen Bono Jike warned him. He said no. I'll play it again so you hear how special you are. I want you to understand how special... Some of you don't know why we fight for Biafra. This is the reason why. We are the oldest of the oldest, the very ancient people. When I tell you that Igbo language is world that's speaking in heaven, you're doubting me. That is what they speak in heaven. The angels address God Almighty in Igbo language. This is the reason why. The oldest civilization on this earth... Land, the center of the whole world. Let's listen to this man once again. I'm I'm excited about it. Right. Listen. This is a great people. Great, this is a great nation. Great nation. There was a country. That was a country. And then later when I learned something most people don't know. Most people don't know this. There is a plausible argument that mm -hmm. democracy began in Igbo land. Democracy. The very first written constitution on this planet was written by the Igbo people. The Igbo people wrote the first constitution, but Europeans don't want the world to know. Because they are wondering, if that is the case, why did God put people in Africa? That's so backwards. And I'm saying to them, God sent us to Africa to bring light into Africa. That's our job. In here, Chineke, in our villages, in here, which means light, is in Anambra, it's everywhere you go to. Do you not see who we are? <laughs> the first written constitution in CBD, the first. 
Let's listen. I want to listen to this man more, please. Let's listen to him. The very first democracy that involves self-governance. Self-governance. For everybody. Autonomous community. the Greek wealthy, but everybody was in Igbo land. Igbo land. And the very first democracy that permitted women leaders. The first, the, 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 anywhere, when America was saying give women a vote, this is our mothers, our mothers, so we are rulers. They rule the families. When women are talking in our culture, men don't come out. They, you, don't, you, you don't dare come out. Can you see it? Can you hear who we are? When I hear all these fools in Abuja and in Lagos, all these riffraffs talking rubbish, I feel sorry for them. That is why we are harsh with any idiot that calls himself an elder who doesn't know history. What we are fighting for is to protect something that anybody will be envious of. This is who we are. And we started worshipping idol. Somebody will go to the farm and cut a wood. Oh, Pierre will say, you cut an idol. You're rubbish. You bow down before an idol. And God took away all the blessing he gave us. He said, go and worship idol. And that's what you want. That's why we're in a mess. God gave us 700 years to come out of it. We continued in idol worship. And he sent the British. The Arabs came. He said, no, I don't want you to do it. He sent the British instead. Go and conquer them. And as you're conquering them, you're going with the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. If they are smart, God said, if they are smart, they will go to Old Testament and see who they are. And that's what we did. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's listen. Was in Igbo land. Igbo land. The West, Europe, we were still in the Dark Ages. Europe was nothing. You see all these white men building aeroplane and going to the moon, they were nothing. When Biafra land was bubbling, when the kingdom of Biafra was at its peak with God Almighty in heaven as the under king, Europe was nowhere they were in the Stone Ages. They were nothing. Oh dear me. And yet the Igbo had figured out a way to have a just and meaningful government and a just and meaningful society and due process and fairness. And to this day, you see a great... Listen, due process and fairness. These things are weaved into our idioms we have, our proverbs. This is a white man teaching you who you are. Fairness. Which is the foundation of a constitution. Fairness. I want the world to hear this. Biafra means fairness. You can never cheat anybody and get away with it. Never. In Biafra land. Oh God in heaven. Mm. Some idiots come up and they say they're elders. They know nothing. They are promoting one Nigeria. Bringing the curse of God upon them. And on their children. They know nothing. God said you cannot go into Nigeria. You're not a Nigerian. I asked the British to come to show you who you are. That you may return to me. That I may reestablish my kingdom. Before I raised such and I found it, I used to tell you that Biafra is the kingdom of heaven on this earth. I told you that before. Before I did raise such and I discovered it. And I've shown it to you. I showed it, it's on my page. Go to me, scroll down, you will see it. Kingdom of Biafra is there written, which means that the name couldn't have come from anywhere else. After listening to the message of Ashwin Namaz and I hope you have learned a lot. I hope you have been energized. For those of you who are still calling themselves, who we are confused. On where to follow after listening to this message i hope you have now known your direction for those who are still referring to themselves one nigerian members of them who are calling themselves nigerians after listening to this message i hope you've known what you are referring to yourself you are actually condemning yourself
Mais tu crois que quand bien continue de prospérer sur les damas dans les canaux. Mais tu crois que quand bien continue de protéger sur les sur les damas dans les canaux. Mais tu crois que quand bien continue de give damas dans les canaux strength. Give him more strength wherever he is. Give him good health. Mais tu crois que quand bien give him more wisdom, knowledge and revelations wherever he is, so that we can march into our freedom very very soon. Non stop, nothing to stop us. Mais tu crois que quand bien protéger sur les bobos. Wherever Sunday go may be at this moment, may Chukwu Kabia must strengthen him, give him strength, set him free automatically, and let him have his freedom once again. May Chukwu Kabia protect all the good ones, protect all the Biafrans, protect everyone that is fighting for freedom in that contract of call Nigeria. Everybody, every indigenous tribe, sincerely fighting for freedom in that very contract of call Nigeria. May Chukwu Kabia grant all of our freedom. We shall be free very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Our God bless. Bye-bye. See you again on the next video.